Lord Penny is Rector of Imperial College. Rector, we're tremendously grateful that you've found time to come along and talk to us today. Um, could we talk first about what you did before you became Rector of the College, and after that, a little bit about what being actually being the Rector involves? Yes. You are, in fact, uh, an old student of the College, are yes. you? Yes, yes. I was in the Maths Department, took a Maths degree, and mm -hmm. then a PhD here. You, this was with Professor Kronig, I believe. Yes, Professor Kronig, yes. After that, you went to America for a couple of years. Yes, uh, with a Commonwealth Fund Fellowship, and there I went to Madison, Wisconsin. Uh -huh. And then I came back to Cambridge, and again I uh, took another PhD there. <laughs> and as you remarked to me, why do you want two PhDs? And I said, well, one good reason was I didn't have to pay income tax. <laughs> <laughs> That's income tax on your fellowship with yes. Elder Cambridge. Yeah. You, you came back to become a reader in the maths department. Yes, it was about yes. just before the war, yes. yes. And you in fact took your DSC during that time. Yes, I did, that's right. What happened during the war years? Were you still at the college? Well, uh, in, no, uh, nominally I was, but in fact I wasn't because almost at once I got caught up in the, in the war mm. and I was um, sent to the Ministry of Home Security and one of the most urgent problems at that time, of course, was bombing and explosions, yes. all that horrible stuff. And uh, I was asked to study uh, explosions and effects of explosions. Yes, and what measurements of them? Yes, measurements of them. And that, yes. I, I believe in '44 you were uh, you went over to Los Alamos in New yes. Mexico. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, this was the uh, atomic weapon project in yes. the United States and uh, I was sent there uh, because I'd been studying explosions and so I, that's why I was sent. And you were just there for the one year till the end of the war in fact? Yes, that's right. In 1946 you became a fellow of the Royal Society. Yes. And what, what else were you involved in after the war? Well, when I came back from America, I was, um, enormous pressure was put on me at that time to continue with this work. Uh, the, what's the international situation then? This was on the atomic bomb. On yeah. atomic, yes, a whole atomic project. Uh, the situation was very grim internationally and our government was, wanted to do something about it. So I was pressurized and agreed to stay in the Ministry of Defense, which, uh, well, the Ministry of Supply, as it was then. And then, uh, later on, I went to Aldermaston, yes. and I was at Aldermaston for seven years. And then Sir John Cockcroft, um, who was then at Harwell, yes. moved to build Churchill College at Cambridge, I moved to Harwell yes. and did the research side there, and I did about six years there. And, and during this time, the Atomic Energy Authority, the United yes, Kingdom Atomic Energy right. Authority, it was set up in 1954. Yes, in fact, you became the deputy chairman. Yes, I did. After leaving Harwell, I became deputy chairman, mm -hmm. and then a little later on, I was chairman. Mm -hmm. And this brings us up to 1967, in fact, yes. when you became rector of Imperial College. Correct. Can you tell us what uh, being the rector involves? What sort of meetings are you involved in? Yes, uh, I have quite a lot of meetings. Um, the governing body and its committees, and that, of course, is long-term policy, finance of the college. Then the board of studies, which is the academic policy of the college. The Dean's Committee, which meets about every two weeks, which is uh, the day-to-day -day administration, quite a lot of day-to-day -day business. There are a number of university bodies, uh, the Senate, the, the Computing Committee, which, because London University has centralized mm. facilities, and of course we have some of them here, there are many ad hoc mm. committees. Have you spent much time working on the relationship between the college and the students? Yes, I have quite a lot of time on that. I think we've made real progress there. 
and I'm very pleased. Have there been many changes, in fact, as you see it, since you were a student here? The, uh, Attitude the, of students. Uh, uh, very, very big differences there, yes. Very big. I think the students now uh, really are much more um, able to s join in thinking about what we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my day, we, we were just the, on the receiving end, and we didn't dream ever. I mean, you, I is this because uh, we're sort of richer as an industrial country now? Than yes, it is. It's part of the by. growth of, of society itself, and we're richer, and young people are more mm. independent. How do you see the future of the college and the, the scope of the subjects taught here? I think we, we've got some very deep thinking to do here, and I believe the students can play an important part. Um, we are a very high quality, traditional, classical and modern, very strong departmental structure, uh, rather narrow front, and I'd like to see um, a broadening of this. Is this affected by the policy in London University itself? No, I don't think it's, no. Uh, London University is very in, uh, much concerned with uh, thinking about growth and mm. where growth should be encouraged and not having several colleges all trying to grow in the same field. Yeah. Do you think, well, what you're implying is that there are certain sort of growth areas as far as colleges are concerned, certain colleges yes. specialize in certain yes. things. Do you think there's a danger in specializing in, say, here teaching too much science and not enough about the applications of the science? Yes, I think that. I think, it, it, I think we want a somewhat broader courses so that those who want to specialize can still do so, but others can get a, a broader uh, understanding. How do you think this balance should be decided? I think all parts of the college have got to join in this, but I'd like to see it thrashed out, first of all, in um, student staff committees in the departments. Mm. I'd like it to start there. And how, how do you think this should go? Do you think this should be sort of an experimental? Sort well, of I, I don't see why uh, in any department they shouldn't try and experiment. Uh, I know we have ultimately to give degrees and this is a very formal process and uh, it has to conform to regulations but within that there is still scope for, for trying things. So are you saying that students should become more involved in the with the substance of their courses so they can see the I think they should have taught. a say in what mm -hmm. what's being taught I, and in a broad sense of course yes. because they, <laughs> they don't yet know what the details. Yes. But this will help in seeing the, the relevance of the, the science. Yes seeing the applications. I think it. that's right. Could we go on to uh, talk about the attitude of industry to graduates these days? Yes. How do you see this? Well, I think industries uh, learned a great deal, and so has the universities, and we still have more to learn. Uh, industry, I think, has improved a great deal in how it handles young men that have just left the colleges. They've, in the past, they've been rather bad at that. They do give them properly trained courses in management, lasting mm -hmm. over a period of several years. But I still think this uh, this wants uh, further thinking and, mm -hmm. and more more study, and, and then op operating it. More sort of relationships between colleges and yes. industry, in fact. That's right, and of course, one of the, it can happen between all the technical departments, but. Mm -hmm. Also, I think the management science uh, field is a very good link with industry. Mm -hmm. Rector, may I ask you just one final question? Um, you've done many enthralling, exciting things in your career, and you have many honors. Is there any one thing that stands out in your mind? Well, I've never sought the honors. Uh, I've always done the job that I thought was important, and which was put to me either as a duty or mm. as a, uh, something that I could do well. And that was, that's not one thing, but it's one principle. That's the principle I've, I've used throughout my life. Rector, thank you very much indeed for being with us today.